Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you a trick using Sound Toys radiator plugin and Softube vintage amp room to create an effect that I get when I usually use the preamp from a tape echo into a real amp to excite it. Uh, this is a really an old trick that people used to use. They used to take maybe like the preamp from like a space echo or an echoplex and they would put the delay in bypass mode basically just using the signal path to boost their signal into the amp. Not, not a ton to get a ton of distortion, but something just happens when those two signals meet, you know, the, the preamp from the, the echoplex meets the front of the amp. It just, it adds a, a little, some, some might joke, it adds a little fairy dust or something to it, but it definitely puts a little shimmer on it that is hard to get otherwise. This of course is really hard to do in digital because when we're using amp simulators, like I'm using the amp room here, um, you can't really push your signal harder going into the converters or you get digital clipping. I've found that using the radiator plugin, which is an emulation of a line mixer, it gets me a very similar effect as say using the preamp from like an echoplex. I'm going to play a line here using this Rickenbacker 360 and we're going to uh, experiment with some of the settings and you can hear what it's doing and, and how it's changing the signal. So originally when that song was recorded, it was a Rickenbacker through a Vox amp, which is why I chose this pairing. Now let's listen to it. I'm going to um, turn Radiator off and we're going to listen to it just running through the Vox amp emulation, which the settings I guess I played with a little bit, but not too much. Here it is. I'm going to put in Radiator now. Turn it off. Let's listen to that one more time. With it off. With it on. Off. It just adds a little shimmer to it. Uh, it makes it sound even a little more voxish. Uh, you could make it brighter from the plug-in, but I find that something just is a little different when it's running through this radiator plug-in, much like it is when running through the preamp of an Echoplex or a Space Echo. Uh, and like it's not the same if you use a, a booster to hit your amp harder. There's just something about that signal path in those, in those um, tape units. I think it has to do with it being a preamp. Um, so here's what I have on the radiator plug-in. Uh, I made sure that it was on the clean mode, not the noisy, because I didn't want it to, to impair any more noise than the guitar already has in it. I did have it select to mic uh, up switch as opposed to line, only because uh, I thought it had a little less low end in it, which I was lo looking for in this track. And that sounds a little more beatily to me because that stuff is it doesn't have a lot of low end in it. It's really punchy. Um, everything else I, I pretty much left the same except for knocking the treble back a little bit just to kind of tame some of the harshness, uh, which I find DI signals, um, even with amp sims, are a little bit, even though the amp room is, is pretty gentle when it comes to the high end. Um, and I pushed the output just ever so slightly. Uh, if you weren't using a Rickerbacher and going for that sound, one thing you could do is you could really use the output of the radiator to push the front end of the vintage amp room or the metal amp room, uh, whatever you're using, uh, just to kind of get that sound happening. So if I was using like uh, a Stratocaster and I wanted to kind of get a little bit more of that, that U2 vibe, I would maybe use the radiator into uh, a delay plug-in and then, um, or delay plug-in into the radiator into the amp sim and really push the output of the amp sim really hard to kind of get that, that, that thing happening. There's just subtle things like this you can do when you're recording your tracks, particularly when it's all digital, that you can do just to enhance them in, in a subtle way. 